Hello and welcome to blog number two, me learning to play the Anglo concertina. I'm really enjoying myself doing this. It's been a couple of days since my first blog. Uh, yesterday I was practicing away uh, on this tune that I've just played you and there was this almighty crack and what I thought was a 10 fold bellows turned out to be 11 fold because this fold here, let's just open it up without using my hair button. <coughs> this fold here was actually glued to the, the end. I think it'd been, been closed for so long in the shop that it had just got stuck. Anyway, no harm done, but it was quite scary. I made a few discoveries yesterday um, about this particular 20 button concertina. If you don't know, of course, uh, it's in two keys. The key of C, that's the, the row nearest the front of the concertina, and the higher uh, key is G, that's the back row. All the notes on the push are found in the major chord, so this way it's all yeah. notes in C major, C, E and G the notes are. And on the back row, the G row, all the notes are notes found in a chord of G major, which of course is G, B or D. They're all G's or B's or D's. And of course all the notes on the pull are all the other notes uh, in the scale, the other four notes uh, in those respective scales. I'm sure most of you knew that, but if you didn't, you might find that interesting. Um, I compiled this special sheet, which I will uh, put up on my website, which is basically a load of stats um, <clears throat> that I discovered. Um, you can see some color coding there, reds and yellows and greens. And basically, you've got um, a couple of notes uh, that occur three times. For instance, uh, you've got um, the note G, okay, which is here, and it's also here, and it's also here. See the same note on three buttons, and there's also a D that does that. Uh, you've got um, 11 notes that occur twice, and there are 12 notes that only occur once each, and I've marked those as red. So although there are um, 20 buttons, 40 notes if you like, push and pull, you've actually only got 25 different notes. You've got four A's, six B's, six C's, six D's, five E's, two F's, three F sharps and eight G's. And you need the F sharps because in the key of G major, uh, which this back row deals with, uh, you've got an F sharp in the key signature. It's G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. Of course, C has no sharps. It's C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. So that's why you need those F sharps. There are no sort of accidentals on this. Only 20 button. You need a 30 button to get accidentals. Actually, having said that, my friend in America, he's got a 22 button concertina, which is obviously um, got some extra accidentals uh, so he can play more tunes than I can, so I'm quite jealous at the moment. Uh, the range of the concertina is quite interesting. Um, it's The lowest note is the C below middle C, which is that one there. Um, and it goes up to the B, which is almost three octaves above uh, middle C, which is this note. Very, very high note. Now I play melodian. Uh, I played melodian a long while before I played concertina. And I found something quite interesting yesterday. I'm going to show you this, this melodium, which is a one row in C. Quite interestingly, this, these notes... They are almost identical to the notes on the C row uh, of my Anglo concertina. The only difference is on the melodium, it's a push E, pull G, and on the concertina it's a push C and a pull G. So there's actually only one note difference. So it's very, very similar. And of course, what is quite useful if you're a melodeon player playing concertina is it gives you quite a lot of practice playing this upper octave because here, so that lower octave is fairly easy to play. When you start getting to the, the second octave, it's not quite so easy. I find that quite awkward and I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only one. 
Uh, whereas when you play the, when you play the concertina, uh, a lot of your tunes are on the right hand side of the concertina, which is kind of this half of the melodeon. So you get a lot of practice at playing uh, the higher register of, of a melodeon, which gives you it's good practice for learning that that half. So that's that's going to be a kind of a, a, an added bonus in learning learning the concertina. So basically, um, if I just get the concertina here, basically uh, these, uh, this is the C row, this one here. So these five buttons here correspond to these five buttons here. Okay, and I'll turn it round, try not to drop it. Um, and these five buttons here correspond to the lower five buttons uh, on the melodeon. So if you like, the concertina is like a melodeon right hand split into two. But of course, you've got the you've got the G row as well as so you've got all those extra notes. You haven't got any bass, but of course, you use your lower notes um, on the uh, left hand side uh, to give you some bass if you want to. You can play tunes where you don't play any basses, uh, or you can play little umpa things like I did when I played Go Turn Up Roadie in Blog One. So that tune I played earlier, uh, Maggie in the Woods. What's interesting about this tune, of course, is that you're using both the rows. Um, on my tablature, and I'll, I'll publish this sheet so you can, you can learn it. On my tablature, uh, the notes in the capital letters are notes found on the C row, like the front row. Notes in lowercase or little letters are notes found on the G row or the back row. Uh, if a, a note has a minus sign uh, to the left of it, it's played on the uh, pull or the draw, and if it doesn't, it's played on the push. And if it's in brackets, that means it's not a main tune note, it's kind of a harmony. So for instance, when I play, and I add that C to the E there, both uh, on the uh, G row, the E is the tune and the C is the harmony, see? So, this is in 2-4, so you count it 1 and 2 and 1 and 2, 1 and 2 and 1 and 2 and, one and, two and a 1, like that. I think this is a polka, um, and so um, it's a fairly easy time signature to pick up. And notice in the third bar, uh, 1 and 2 and a uh, 1 and 2, that last note is very late in the bar. So the first part of the tune there. Notice that I didn't use the air button. Um, I should have done really because obviously um, the, the bellows are getting quite stretched out there. Um, so I need to keep my thumb on that and incorporate that. So when I start the tune, I have the bellows open a little bit. So I can play those first three push notes before I start heading out on the pull. Huh? And the second part, but the B part of the tune is a run down G F sharp E D, all on the all on the uh, the G row, all lowercase. And then you've got a note on the C row, so it's in capitals. Lots of notes on the pull notices. Same as before there. played Little Donkey in Blog 1, I just played up and down one row, but of course it makes a lot more sense to, to play across the rows, getting the notes where you can. Um, and this is a very good one for me to practice because I'm row crossing, uh, lots of notes on the pull, on the push, uh, lots of bellows changes, and the thing I've got to develop next, of course, is using the air button as part of the playing technique, just as it is on the melodeon. So using the air button took me a little while to pick up on the melodeon and it's going to obviously be the same on this, but it's definitely uh, worth doing. So I'm not sure how much use that chart will be to me that I've made of all the notes that are duplicated or in some cases uh, are triplicated, if that's a, if that's a word. Um, but it's sort of helping me find my way around the, the, uh, the instrument and it can't be a bad thing, can it, to, to know which button gives you which note and if there are any uh, uh, 
um, notes duplicated on buttons, and it's probably a very good idea to learn those. Um, it feels like quite hard work this, uh, just as it did when I started playing the melody, and that's partly my terrible playing, and partly the limitations of this sort of budget instrument. I'm guessing, um, well I know, I know for a fact, because I've played them, uh, a better instrument will, will be a lot easier to play. But anyway, this will do me for at least a few weeks, hopefully, and we will see what develops. So there we are, that is the end of blog number two, and I hope you enjoyed it.